you joined us this morning to celebrate Jesus and to be together. We know times are a little rough right now and things are a little different, but we're so glad that we get to join together online and celebrate Jesus. Well, grab your Bible, grab your cup of, cup of coffee. It's okay if you're still in your slippers because no one else is going to know. And let's worship Jesus together. We thank you for your presence. Father, we thank you for your peace. We thank you that you're with us, even now that you never leave. And Father, I pray that in this moment and in this time of worship, as each family and each person is at their home right now, that you would meet them where they're at. Lord, that they would encounter you, that they would encounter your presence, that they would know that you are real and you are alive. And Lord, that any fear or any anxiety right now would just be lifted off in the name of Jesus. And we just proclaim your name, Lord. We proclaim the name of Jesus over every home. We plead the blood of Jesus, the protection of Jesus over every home right now. Lord, we ask that you would begin to sweep into people's houses and encounter them this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for who you are and that in you is everything we need. Lord, would you unify our hearts as we worship you this morning, as we lift up the mighty name of Jesus. We magnify you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, you're touching every heart. I worship you, I worship. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're turning lives around. I worship you. I worship.
work it you never stop you never stop work it you never stop you never stop work it even when i don't see it you work it even when i don't feel it you work it you never stop you never stop work it you never stop you never stop work even when i don't see it you work it even when i don't feel it you work it you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you work it even when i don't feel it you work it you never stop you never stop working you never stop You 
you're turning it for good all. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough for me. Even now, your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough for me. Even now. So we speak peace to every heart. Peace to every heart. We speak peace to every heart. Speak peace to every heart, peace to every heart. We speak peace to every heart. And now, it's His grace is enough for you. 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 Even now, see He is. We make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, yeah. We make miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. and everything around you is changing and you need to know this morning 
that even though chaos and shaking is happening around you, that you belong to a kingdom that is unshakable. And you belong to a king who is holding everything. He is the anchor that holds you and you are on a firm foundation. So fix your eyes on the King of Kings. Fix your eyes on the one who is unchanging, the one who is steady. This morning, He is holding you. He has you. And He's not going to let you go in the midst of this. He's the anchor that holds you. The anchor that holds you. He's the anchor that holds you. He's holding you. The anchor that holds you. The anchor that holds you. He's the anchor that holds you. Let's sing one more time. You take what the enemy meant. take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for my good one more time you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it
Throw my fears into the wind. I am desperate for a touch of heaven. Oh, 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 
for me, for me. Only Jesus for me, for me. Only Jesus for me. Lord, we can see how quickly things can change in the world around us and we can see how quickly things can become chaotic and all the things that maybe we've depended on or come to trust in, Lord, we can see how those things are so easily shaken, how those things are so easily broken down and the places that maybe we've taken shelter in, Lord, those, those places have let us down. And Lord, we just proclaim this morning that you are a firm foundation and that your kingdom is a kingdom that is unshakable. And that you are a refuge and you are a strong tower that we can run to that will never be shaken, that will never be brought down, that the things of this world cannot touch the things of the kingdom. And we just proclaim that you are good this morning. That you love your children. You are a good father. And that we can run to you. We can cling to you. That you are a source of hope. You are a source that we can trust in. That you are faithful. That you are constant. You never change. And Lord, right now we lift up those in this body that have a need, that you already know that need, God. Your scripture says that you know our needs before we ever speak them. You know every need, Lord. And we just ask you right now that you would meet us in those places, Jesus. That you would show yourself faithful in those places, Jesus. And I'm just remembering even now of the testimonies of how recently, Lord, just in these times, how you have met me, how you've done already amazing miracles, things that you've met me in provision, Lord. You've met me through my generosity, God. In those times where I decided to trust you, you came through, Jesus, because it's who you are. And I pray that each person who has a need would have a testimony of your goodness, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that... We thank you that you are Emmanuel, that you're God with us. Thank you that you're with us this morning. We ask, Lord, that as we go into a time of offering, Lord, that you would bless these tithes and these offerings. Father, that everybody that gives this morning out of obedience, Lord, that they would know that you are the provider, that you are the one who meets every need, and they don't have to fear Lord, they don't have to worry, but they can, they can give out of obedience, Lord, and that you're going to meet them. Father, we ask that you take everything that's been given this morning and you'd use it for your glory. Use it for your glory, God. We trust you this morning, Lord. We trust you in every area. We honor you. We thank you for your presence. Thank you that we get to gather together even though we're not in the same room. We get to be together in spirit. Lord, bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys. We are going to have a slide that's going to come up on your screen right after this. And normally we would have you come up here and rush the stage and bring your tithes and offerings up front. But you're going to have to give this morning in a different way. So I want you guys to pay attention to the screen. There'll be three different ways. You can give via text message. You can give um, on our Acts app. 
And you can also go, go to our website and give there. But on the next slide, you'll see more information for that. So stay with us because Booker has an incredible word that he wants to share with you next. Bless you. Good morning, Ash Church. Hey guys, I know this is a really strange season that we're living in, but I really want when you guys come to church that, you know, we're, get, we're, we're hearing enough about everything that's going on outside of here. I really want us when we come to church uh, to talk about Jesus. And so even though this is a strange season we're living in, I want to talk about the biblical season that we're living in. And what I mean is what we're celebrating this Sunday and next Sunday. So you guys know that, that today is Palm Sunday, right? Today's Palm Sunday. It's preparing us for next Sunday, which is Easter. And so Palm Sunday is when the church all over the world, Christians all over the world, are celebrating the triumphal entry of Jesus. And that's what we call it, right? So this is when Jesus was up on the Mount of Olives, and he gets on a donkey, and he rides down the Mount of Olives through the Kidron Valley, up into Jerusalem, up into the temple. And this is a really important story for us to understand. And a few things uh, with this is we need to realize, first of all, that, that Palm Sunday didn't happen on Sunday. It happened on a Monday. So really, we could call it Palm Monday. But the other thing that we need to think about that really helps us with the story is that why was Jesus going to Jerusalem? Now, we know that he was going to Jerusalem because his, his eyes were fixed on it. And he was going to this place because he was going to die on a cross for all of us. But he was also going to Jerusalem on this specific uh, in a specific time, because it was the time of Passover. And so, you know, Passover is what really typically today, Passover is a, we consider it a Jewish holiday, and then we consider Easter and Palm Sunday Christian holidays, but they're happening at the same time. But really, the, the question becomes, you know, should we celebrate Passover, and, and what, what is the significance of Jesus in the Passover? And so we're going to read through some scripture today, hopefully really get excited about this. But first, let's pray as we get into it. Let me just pray over myself, pray over the Word, pray over you guys. So God, we come before you, Lord, and we want to celebrate you. We want to celebrate Jesus. Jesus, we are so thankful that 2,000 years ago that you, you went up on the Mount of Olives and that you got on that donkey and you rode down and you went up into the temple. And then a few days later, you allowed yourself to be judged, tried, and you died on a cross. But you didn't just die on the cross, you were buried three days later, you rose again, that we could be saved, that we could be with you, God. So we pray that we would just understand these stories today in a, in a deeper way, Lord, and we would get excited about who you are, about this season, and that this season would truly be one of reflection, of excitement, of worship. But we bless you and we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So again, where we're talking about um, the, these holidays and really trying to pull the biblical significance out of them. So just kind of a side note, you know, we as Christians celebrate Easter, right? But Easter uh, wasn't really a, a, a day or a celebration until the year 325. So really 300 years after Christ died, did Christians start celebrating Easter? And I'm not saying we shouldn't celebrate it. I'm just giving you some information. But really up until that time, Christians celebrated Passover. And so there, there's something, there's something special in the meaning of Passover that I want us to see. But first, let's read the triumphal entry story. So I want to read it in Luke 15, and then we're also going to read it in John 12, because, because we get a little bit of uh, important facts or important information out of both places. So Luke 19, 28, if you have your Bibles, I want to give you a second. I want you to turn there with me. I know maybe on television or maybe on your computer, it's a little bit easier to get distracted, but I think if you open up your Bible and you read along with me, you're going to be able to really get into it this morning. So Luke 19, verse 28. Here we go. It says, after he had said these things, he was going on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. So if, you if you're in Israel and you're traveling to Jerusalem, you're going to go up because it's up on a mountain. So he's going up to Jerusalem. It's a higher elevation. And when he approached Bethphage and Bethany, near to the mount that is called Olivet. So he's approaching the Mount of Olives, which is right outside Jerusalem. And right on the other side of the Mount of Olives are these two towns. He sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and there as you enter you will find a colt, tied on which no one has ever sat. <coughs> Excuse me. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say, 
The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, the owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. They brought it to Jesus, and they threw their coats on the colt, and they put Jesus on it. And he was going, and they were spreading their coats on the road. And as soon as he was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God, joyfully with a loud voice, for all the miracles which they had seen. And they were shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven, and glory in the highest. So I hope you get this picture, right? Jesus is approaching the Mount of Olives. He's on the other side of Jerusalem, coming up the Mount of Olives. He sends his guys to, to get the donkey or get the colt. He, he gets on and begins to ride down. And all the people are just celebrating as Jesus rides down the mountain. And so I also want to read just a few verses, about four verses in John, when John tells this story. So turn in your Bibles to John 12, verse 12. John 12, verse 12. And it says, the next day, the great crowd, this is important, the great crowd, the great crowd that had come for the festival, that had come for the festival of Passover, heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches, this is why we call it Palm Sunday, right? They took palm branches and they went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as, it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. And at first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things that had been written about him, that these things that had been done, not just written about him, but these are the things that he did. And so here the same story, but it gives us this, this picture that we need of this great crowd. And he's coming down, they're waving palm branches. And so why? Were they doing this? And so first of all, I really want you guys to get a good picture of what this looked like. So you're going to see a video here of us walking down the Mount of Olives. And what we're walking down is actually, so you kind of get you an idea. So yeah, if you guys go to Israel uh, with us someday, you can go up on the Mount of Olives and you can walk in, down the Mount of Olives through the Kidron Valley up into Jerusalem on the same route that Jesus took, kind of seeing the same uh, landscape, if you will, that Jesus saw. There's Hannah and Stephen and Joro. And there we are. So you, we're walking down this route. So you can see it's a mountain. Walking down the Mount of Olives. There's Bill. And when we get down the Mount of Olives, you can see up, you know, up ahead there was, the, there was the Temple Mount. This is where the temple was. So this is what these guys were seeing. So let's go back to, to, for just a minute, why all these people were here. It says they were all here for the festival. They were here for the festival or pa of Passover. And, and one thing, I think you guys might know this already, but everything, every key moment in the life of Jesus happened on one of God's biblical feasts or one of God's biblical festivals. And so in the Old Testament, you know, the biblical fe feasts or festivals, we, we think they're Jewish, they're not really Jewish so much as they are God's. God is the one that told Moses to have these. And they were all a picture, a foreshadowing, a celebration of Jesus coming. So when the, the fact that Jesus is coming to Jerusalem on Passover to be sacrificed as a lamb is really important for us. So first of all, a few key things about Passover. So the key figure of Passover, the, the, the thing that you've got to have on Passover, the thing that matters the most is the Passover lamb, right? So let's go back to the story. Why are they celebrating Passover? Well, not only God told them to, but this is why God told them to. They were celebrating that they as a people were in slavery, and they were in bondage, and they were in Egypt, right? And so they were in slavery and bondage, and God had God was delivering them, and he had these first nine plagues that, that came upon the Egyptians and, you know, Pharaoh's heart was hardened every time, and he wouldn't let the, he wouldn't let the people go. But, but God had these first nine plagues, and he did these nine plagues to the Egyptians. But then he had a tenth plague. And the tenth plague was, God was going to send the angel of death, and it was going to go into all the land of Egypt, including where the Israelites lived, including to their homes. So remember, the first nine plagues, they were just attacking the Egyptians. But the tenth plague was released upon the whole land here, right? Upon Goshen and Egypt, everywhere. And the only way 
The first nine plagues, the, you didn't get affected by them because they were, they were Jewish. So the simple fact they were Jewish, the first nine plagues didn't affect them. But the tenth plague, it didn't matter if you were Jewish or Egyptian. Only one thing mattered. You had to take a lamb, uh, kill it, sacrifice it, and take its blood and put it on the, on the door, wipe it on the door of your house. And only the homes that had wiped the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their house, on the door jams of their house, only those house, only those homes would be saved from death. And so a few really important things about this. So again, it wasn't that they were Jewish. It wasn't that they were Egyptian. It was whoever did this. And so, of course, all the Jewish people did this. And, and there are really some interesting things about this. First of all, the, uh, the sign that they would have made with this uh, actually forms a Hebrew letter. And it's the letter for life. And where did they do this? They had to put the blood of life over the door of their home. Well, the door is the heart of their home. So they had to put the, the, the blood, the life, over the heart so that they could be saved from death. And that's, to me, that's just really cool stuff. So <clears throat> this is why they're, they're celebrating, they're remembering every year, they're celebrating Passover, and they are, are, are celebrating that God delivered them with the blood of the Lamb. So I don't want to miss something here. Let me make sure I, I got everything here in my notes. So, first of all, the central figure of Passover is a lamb. So we know that Jesus is called the lamb, right? Several of you probably heard that all your life in Sunday school. Jesus is called the lamb. And let me read you a few of these verses. In John 1.29, it says this. The next day when he, talking about John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him, he said, Behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, when we see that, you know, maybe we just think of, oh, it's a, it's a cute, cuddly, innocent creature. But for a Jewish man to say, behold, the Lamb of God, everyone listening knew what he was talking about. Only There's only one Lamb that takes away death. And so when he says this, it has a very uh, Passover meaning and message to it. 1 Peter 1.19, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. And this is uh, like a lamb without blemish or spot, and we'll get to this in just a minute. This is a very uh, Passover verse. He is referring Jesus to the national Passover lamb uh, of Israel that happens on Passover. In Revelation 5.12, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Guys, again, this is a Passover reference. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. So this is a, when, when Jewish people are reading this or understanding this or hearing this, you know, they get, what, what the, whether they believe it or not, they get the reference. They get what they're, they're, the implication of it. So, some really interesting things. So at Passover, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, Jewish people, would, would come to Jerusalem. And every family had to sacrifice a lamb for their family if they could afford it. And uh, they, had to, they had to bring, like, you know, the best lamb, a, a pure lamb, a spotless lamb, a, a lamb without blemish. And so the question becomes, where do you get all these lambs, right? Where does this happen? Well, just a few miles outside of Jerusalem is the town of Bethlehem. So we know about Bethlehem. We know this is the city of where, you know, this is where David was born and uh, where David was from. And we know that this, this is where Jesus was born. Now, what would happen in Bethlehem is you had some special shepherds. These guys, their responsibility was to raise thousands of Passover lambs. And this was really big business, right? And so in Bethlehem, special, special shepherds are raising Passover lambs so that when Passover comes, the people have a place to, to purchase the lambs from. So how cool is it that Jesus was born in Bethlehem? This, this, in fact, this, this kind of had to happen. Let me read you uh, Luke 2, verse, uh, verses 1 through 12. Or actually, let me just read you Luke 2, verse 8. In the same region, or starting in Luke 2, verse 8, so yeah, let me give you a second to turn there. I want you to see this. Luke 2, verse 8. Here we 
we go. In the same region, there were some shepherds. Now this is in Bethlehem, because this is the story when Jesus was born. So in the same region, the same area, there were some shepherds staying out of the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Now, most likely, these are the shepherds in this area that are raising Passover lambs. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a, ma lying in a manger. So you see, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, right? He was born there in the same place in a manger. This was a place where, where the, the, the livestock, where the lambs were. He was born in the same city where all the Passover lambs were raised to be sacrificed um, for the people's sins. So Jesus is born in the same place. And so now let's fast forward, and that's what Luke 2 is about, Jesus being born here. Um, and it's interesting that the shepherds who, who, are, the, who are responsible for, for recognizing and making sure the lambs are spotless, that they're the ones that go to Jesus. So let's fast forward about 33 years after the birth of Jesus, and now we're on this, we're now we're at Palm Sunday or Palm Monday, right? And so on Passover, not only did you bring a lamb to be sacrificed for your family, but there was this one big event that happened um, on Palm Monday, on, on, on this Monday, uh, you know, several days before Friday, before Friday comes, um, the high priest, and it had to be the high priest, the high priest of Israel would leave Jerusalem and he would travel to Bethlehem. And he would pick out the most spotless, the, the, the most beautiful, the most pure lamb. And he would take it back to Jerusalem in order that it would be sacrificed as the national lamb. So this is like the lamb that kind of takes away the sin of all the world, right? This, so every family had to bring one, but then the, the priest would go get the best one. And he would bring it back to Jerusalem so that this national lamb could be sacrificed for, for the whole country, for, for, for the world, if you will. And so, just think about this for just a moment. The priest leaves Jerusalem. He walks down the Kidron Valley, up the Mount of Olives, over into Bethlehem. He gets the lamb. He starts coming back, and he starts walking down the mountain with the lamb. Maybe carrying it like this, or carrying it in his arms. And he's walking down the Mount of Olives. So what's happening when, that all, the, when all the people see him? Man, this is the... This is the biggest celebration of the year. And here comes the high priest with the national Passover lamb and he's carrying it. This is, excuse me, this is going to be the lamb that, that, that pays the price for all of Israel. This is a really big deal. So all the people are there and they're waiting. They're waiting for the high priest to come. And when he comes, man, they are celebrating like, man, praise God, Hosanna in the highest. Like, here comes the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And so the priest is coming down, he's carrying this, and everybody's getting excited. So think about this just for a minute. Like Everything God does has to happen in the right timing, the right moment, for the right reason. <clears throat> so the high priest does this, right? The story we just said. He, he takes the lamb, he goes down the mountain, he's starting to go up to Jerusalem, and everybody's been cheering pretty loud. But then all of a sudden, he hears behind him even louder cheering. He hears like the roar of the crowd. And he's thinking, what's going on? Like I've already passed through. Like I've already gone past those people. Why are they shouting now? And so imagine if you will, the high priest turns around and here comes Jesus. Jesus coming down, being carried by a donkey, by, by, a, by a colt. Like he's coming down the mountain and the people are saying, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus at this point is being prepared, is being chosen, is being recognized as the Lamb of God. And so for, for Jesus to be called the Lamb of God, guys, this is, this is huge. This is very Passoverish, if you will. So everyone's celebrating. 
And then just to think about for a minute, something else that's really important. I read you a verse earlier that said that, you know, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. So he could say it this way, Behold the Passover Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. <coughs> now remember that only the high priest could go get the right lamb, right? And so you had to be of the priestly line to be able to pick out the right lamb. This, was, this is your responsibility. Well, who was John the Baptist? Let me just remind you of this. In Luke 1, 5 it says, In the days of Herod, the king of Judea, there was a priest, so of the priestly line, there was a priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So this is talking about John the Baptist's parents. So John the Baptist's dad was a priest, and his mom was from the line of Aaron, from the, the, the first high priest. Now what did I just tell you? Only the priest could go and, and, and pick and recognize and say, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And here we have John the Baptist, who is from the line of high priests, and he is the one, the only one that can declare, or one of the only ones that can declare, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So when John said this, it wasn't just that it's John, this crazy guy out in the desert doing it. It's that John is, is a priest, and he's able to recognize, Behold, the Lamb of God. And so what else is really important? There's so much in here, right? <clears throat> In Genesis 22, <clears throat> excuse me, we see that um, Abraham took his son Isaac to sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. Well, where are the lambs sacrificed? They're sacrificed on Mount Moriah, the same place. Where is Jesus sacrificed on the cross? On Mount Moriah, the same place. And instead of you know uh, Abraham sacrificing Isaac, right? God shows up and says, Abraham, stop! Don't do it. And God provides a lamb instead, or a ram instead. Let me read you this verse. And God said, Do not stretch out your hand against the lad, and do nothing to him, for I now know that you fear God. Verse 13. Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up as a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Will Provide, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it will be provided. So at Mount Moriah, God did what he didn't require man to do. You know, guys, we are saved by, by, by grace, right? Not by any works that any man should boast. We are saved by grace. So what Abraham didn't have to do, God did. He provided a ram with thorns caught in its, in its head. And Jesus had a, had a crown of thorns you know, pushed down on his head and he was sacrificed as the Lamb of God. And it says here that Abraham called this place, the Lord will provide, or it says in the mount of the Lord, it will be, be provided. But this is really not a correct translation. The correct translation of this verse is this, on this mount, the Lord will be provided. Not that God will provide on this mount, but that the Lord will be provided on this mount. And so Jesus, as the Lamb of God, as the King of Kings, as the Lord, is provided for on this mount. It was a prophecy. On this mount, on Mount Moriah, the Lord will be provided, and He was. A few other things, you know, so they would take the lambs, they would take them into the temple area, they'd begin to prepare them for sacrifice, and they had a, you know, they had a ritual that they would have to go through. And they Mark does us a real uh, solid blessing by noting the times that Jesus was sacrificed or the times that He was prepared to, to be um, killed on a cross. And so Mark tells us that Jesus was hung on the cross at exactly 9 a.m. Now you think you got this Passover celebration going on over here, and you got Jesus getting tried. You know, <clears throat> all these priests, all these Pharisees, all these guys should be focusing on the Passover, but they're so consumed. You know, their focus should be, you would think, the Passover lamb, but all of their focus is on the Lamb of God. It's actually, I guess you could say, where it's supposed to be. They are preparing Jesus as priest to be sacrificed as a lamb. So Mark tells us that exactly at 9 o'clock, Jesus was hung on the cross. Well, the reason this is important is because of this. This is the exact time at 9 o'clock that the priest would be, begin preparing the lambs to be sacrificed. 
So at the exact minute the priests are preparing the lambs to be sacrificed, Jesus is being prepared as the lamb on the cross. Mark tells us that he was on the cross for exactly six hours and that he died at 3 p.m. So praise God that Mark tells us this. At 3 p.m., at exactly 3 p.m. he dies. As at that exact time, the lambs were sacrificed in the temple. How amazing. I mean, as we begin to see what Passover is about, guys, it gets us so excited. You know, I kind of feel like, you know, we grew up going through Easter, and we know it's about Jesus dying on a cross and, and rising again, and we have Easter bunnies and eggs, but we need to understand Passover. Because understanding Passover helps us, it, it gets us more excited about Jesus. I've gotten more excited about Jesus understanding Passover than I ever have about, hey guys, please hear me. I'm not saying don't celebrate Easter. But I, I get more excited the more I understand uh, the biblical feast of God and how, he, and how Jesus um, was the fulfillment of all these. So we don't celebrate Passover in a sense that we're looking for a Messiah to come someday. We can celebrate Passover recognizing that Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. Man, well, guys, we want to thank you for joining us today. Um, and it's our goal to, to really figure out how, to, how are we having church in this time. And make sure you're loving on one another. And guys, if you have needs, if you're struggling, call us, get a hold of us. Man, we want to pray for you. In fact, uh, at the end of this message, there are going to be some names and some phone numbers that, that come up on the screen for a little bit. And, uh, you know, if, if you need to write those down, just push pause for a minute and, and write those down. And if you need prayer today, Man, call someone and say, hey, I'm really struggling or I'm, I'm, you know, maybe I'm living in fear right now or maybe I'm fearful what could happen or maybe something really legitimate that's rough has happened to us and I just need someone to pray with me. So guys, I'm going to pray in just a second and after that we're going to dismiss and if you need prayer today, be sure and check out the slides and uh, man, call someone for prayer. We love you guys. We look forward to seeing you soon. I'm still just kind of have some... Uh, excitement about when we come back together, you know, in person, man, that is going to be an exciting time. We love you guys. Let me pray for you. And uh, yeah, we bless you guys. Jesus, we thank you that you are the perfect lamb of God and you were sacrificed for our sins. And God, I just pray for an understanding, an excitement about Passover. God, that we would be excited to celebrate the sacrifice that you made. We'd be excited to celebrate that Jesus Christ, you, you, like it, not, not like any other lamb, you rose again and you are reigning victorious and one day you're returning to, to take us back with you, Lord, to, to heaven. So God, I just pray everyone that's, that's hearing right now, God, that they would be encouraged about you and being encouraged about you would it cause that to just make us encouraged about everything going on in our lives, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We love you. And I just pray over everyone listening, Lord, today that, that God, whatever they're facing, God, that you would meet with them. God, that you would show them your love, your care, and your provision for them, Lord. We bless you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All I want is to live within your love. Be undone.